Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News. And you're looking at a really trippy Matt Powers, whose background has been blurred for your <laughs> convenience so that you do not get preoccupied by all his books and other baubles and trinkets on the shelves. We're going to be talking about permaculture. More importantly, science and preparedness and abundance and what mm -hmm. that means in our life. Now, I haven't prepared Matt at all about what we'll be talking about tonight, but I wanted to talk about Matt's definition of abundance because I think for many, it's being misinterpreted as lots of stuff, lots of things. And even mm. others that are in our realms think abundance means like huge crops. And I got all this amaranth and corn and squash. I have all this abundance. Have you seen my root cellar? There are pumpkins there. I can eat until uh, March. But <laughs> I, oh, look at us. We're overlapping. Here we are. I don't think that uh, abundance that you and I believe in has to do uh, at all with food. Now, food is part of the abundance that is my life. But the abundance that is my life is the ability to share my knowledge, my skills, and my passion for what I love to do on a daily basis with others. And that gives me the abundance. That's a feeling. It's a feeling like, um, uh, like I feel well, but I want to wake up feeling abundant. Abundant in, in my thought process, in my decision making, in my clarity, in my potential to learn new things. Maybe I was wrong all along. Maybe I will discover a new bug today or, or a new butterfly or a new flower. That is my abundance. And what say you, Matt Powers? Welcome to the show. How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you for having me. So I was talking about this yesterday to a group of my students about how when you boil it down, what I'm doing in permaculture with my writers, with my entrepreneurs, with my kids when I was a teacher, even with myself on a daily basis, it's unlocking greatness. And abundance, if anything, is that greatness, that potential, the greatest potential for whatever we're talking about. I mean, it could be food, but like you said, that's, you know, that's like, that, that's here today, gone tomorrow, you know what I mean? but it's the experiences we have. It's the relationships we have. You know, all goes back to the fountain of all those things, our mindset. And so for me, I believe that abundance, and this is why we lead in with all the stuff though, because they're like, oh, there's so much good food and there's all this. And then I guess I don't need to worry about the scarcity thing anymore because I got all this food and energy and free this. And, and then they start thinking about thinking abundantly. And it's like that growth mindset pairs with the growth lifestyle, because if you don't have the good food, if, you're, if your environment's toxic, if you're in a horrible work situation, if you're you know, in a toxic relationship, that's all going to screw up everything else. You know what I mean? Downstream from there, all your other relationships, your business, all those things, that's the fountain, right? And so it's like when you can actually get these things aligned, when you actually feel abundant, when you wake up in the morning being like, I know who I am, what I am, why I'm here on earth, you know, and I also did a video about this recently about how we're here to create. We're here to, we, we worship creation. We walk around, we're, we're just blown away by nature and in a good way, not like worship in a bad way. I mean, like we go around, we see these monuments of human creation. We literally go and see big buildings and big statues and things that we've created. People are so enamored with their children because it's their greatest creation they've actually created in their lives. I mean, think about it, they're, they're another being. And so I really believe that the abundant mentality is what we all want, is that that creation, that growth, that idea, like you said, that today I can be greater than I've ever been and tomorrow it can happen again. <laughs> And I think that's the humility that permaculture really offers because once you put your scientist hat on and you really get into things, you're like, wow, so we really don't know anything, do we? I thought we had this figured out and we don't. And you start getting into all the science, you even find about like fundamental processes of the earth. Like 
there's water, huge amounts of water deep in the deep down into the earth, and they don't know why. And so it's like the, the our, our planet, the way the sun works, you know what I mean? Our relationship to the sun, all these things we're finding out only now. And, and a lot of it is because we're going back and reading those histories. We're, we're talking about the, the parts of history that didn't fit into our high school classes. We're talking about agriculture that didn't fit into the history books that indigenous people were doing. And, and medicines and, oh, my dog decided to come in. All right, you can come in. Well, Matt, let me, let me jump in here. <laughs> let me like jump in here. And, uh, and, and let's break it down for the people. Because you and I have a, a huge head start on the, on the masses. You have a huge, we have a huge head start on preparedness, on permaculture, on farming, uh, and on our definition of abundance. But I, I believe wholeheartedly that if people are looking to understand what we're talking about, like if they're totally confused right now, they have no idea where we're coming from, that they can uh, ac access this. The accessibility is simple. And it, it starts with one thing. And, and it really sparked me when you said indigenous at the very end there, the indigenous cultures and their original techniques, which we are simply relearning through EM1 and other permaculture principles. Yeah. Um, it all begins for me, and I want you to either uh, agree or deny with gratitude because we, we can never be abundant mm. if we do not begin with the attitude of gratitude. And I've been training myself for nearly a decade every morning and every evening to uh, really think about every moment uh, of the last 24 hours or the 24 hours ahead. And, and to begin, even if I'm in a bad place, let's say I'm feeling bad or I'm upset or this guy made me mad or I'm pissed off by this guy. I can stop and, and, and come back to reality and, and that gratitude list, which may be what you were showing me, I can just start creating a gratitude list, which includes that groundwater that you were talking about. It includes the fact that uh, my new friend, Matt Powers, introduced me to some ancient Korean farming techniques that is now cutting edge science, EM1. And now we're brewing batches here right behind me. I can go grab you. Our, here, watch. That's so amazing. I love hearing that. Yeah, that's and, you know, one, I baby. think a lot of people here in Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I do. <laughs> I think a lot of people hear indigenous and they don't think, they think not European. But the reality is before the Romans, all those people and the, quote, barbarians, those were the indigenous people of Europe. And so we have histories that are slowly leaking out from the back portions of universities that are small stories and bits and pieces. We don't have everything because it was so thoroughly destroyed by the Romans um, and then the Roman Catholic Church. Um, but we also were indigenous and we too have cultures that were just as indigenous, just as wild, you know what I mean? And so it's really an opportunity for everyone to get back in touch with who they were, with the techniques, with this connection with nature. Because it's this deep connection with nature, participating in the cycles of nature, that, that gives us our greatest insight into what, what, why we're here, who we are. Because, I mean, the, the, re the big disconnect with our, our culture and our society, I believe, has to do with this, this, this connection from nature. Because humans and all animals, all like historically speaking, all actually fed into the cycles. They like made the world better just by being there. And, and it's like, if we can just start doing these things and they're not hard, they're not complex. They're things that we instinctually know how to do. They're things that make sense. Like, like, like EM. EM, once it's explained to you, makes so much sense. You're like, oh, it's a preservative. It's fermentation. You know, it's like, oh, okay. And it's unlocking all the nutrients. Got it. But it's the same thing with everything in permaculture. It's a way to start partnering with nature. And really, to when you partner with nature, you in intrinsically feel gratitude. 
because you're like, holy cow, look at this natural process. It's like magic. And it is like magic where the microbes are just doing it and they're, in, you know, they're, they're, they're just doing the same things every time in a predictable, powerful way, in a way that we can't like make a machine or, or like, you know what I mean? We can't like make these solutions the way photosynthesis works, the way EM works, the way all these processes work are beyond our abilities. But when we partner with them, we are partnering this completely other side of humanity. And it's, I think, the side of humanity that we've been neglecting for so long. And for me, going back to the gratitude thing, I think it really started with being in the garden in that quiet space. Um, and and I, I mean, I was, I was, I was, I mean, it sounds kind of surprising probably, but I was pretty bitter for several years after my wife's initial cancer thing. And then like, and ending my career as a musician, as a professional musician, touring all over the U.S., I was pretty angry. But the, the garden really healed me um, in many ways and started opening me up to doing different things. And in the past couple of years, I started doing a, a gratitude journal. Um, I start my day talking about what I'm grateful for. Um, I, yeah, and, and I think that that feeling of like true like joy in relation to gratitude um, is really what enthusiasm is, right? Like when we're filled with the spirit of gratitude, we cannot help but be enthusiastic. I actually wrote a book about this called Unstoppable Enthusiasm. Um, and it's, it goes through my whole story. And uh, yeah, this is, I mean, for me, it's the linchpin for my business, for my family, for everything, gratitude and that abundant mindset. Um, people ask me how I get everything done, I, I get done. It's like, well, because it's fun. It's exciting. I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to go out and work today and, and, and chop that wood or, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, let me jump in here and let's, let me just say that I think that we're turning away from egocentric pleasures, egocentric hedonism to more uh, important spiritual hedonism. And that would be the attitude of gratitude. This attitude of gratitude is picking on uh, I believe we're reaching new levels of almost a tipping point where two, three, four, five percent of the population is experiencing the same type of awakening spiritually as you and I have. And, and that gratitude list is a simple way that if you have no idea what we're talking about, just shut the fuck up, sit down with a piece of paper and a pencil and, and start writing down what you're grateful for. If you have legs and you don't know where to start, you can start by writing down legs because there are people that don't have legs. You can add your arms because I know some people that don't have arms, eyes, ears, hair. If you're over 50 and you have hair, oh my God, you mustn't use nair or you're not bald. So that's like a short list for people just getting started. Then you can be grateful for clean air, the fact that bees are still alive, insects, food, nature. On and on and on. The, you can literally write a gratitude list for the rest of your life and never stop and never run out of ideas. That is the beauty of the gratitude list. And um, I want to real quick do a segue. Uh, I was just invited to the Crestone Energy Fair. Is that your book? Yeah, let's talk about that after I do this. Yeah, that's unstoppable uh, enthusiasm. I didn't want to rock. <clears throat> let, me, let me just do this snippet for I Energy just, Festival. I want to hear about this. Yeah, I was contacted by the Crestone Energy Fair. Now, if you don't know about Crestone, Colorado, it's this alternative spiritual community up in the high mountains uh, on the eastern side of the San Luis Valley, right on the other side of the Sand Dunes National Monument and the Alligator Farm, literally where most of the UFOs have been spotted, all the cattle mutilations, etc. And this town of Crestone has hundreds Whoa. of esoteric churches that meld Christianity and, uh, and aliens, and, but all of them are gratitude-based. And you can't judge them all because they all might be yeah. a spaghetti monster or whatever. But they have this energy fair, and it's the seventh annual energy fair. And they invited me potentially to speak, but I really want to go there because it's all about sustainable construction, sustainable farming, sustainable living practices, renewable energy. And then that's all the first day. And the second day 
is this. What needs to happen up here to mm-hmm. understand what we just explained to you the day before? Because the the general sheeple, the general population, and I and I like to cut them down and call them sheep, they are completely unaware of where we're coming from. People come over here and they know I have plenty of money to shit in a, a bathroom, but I pr- choose to shit in a bucket. And, and it's... It's not because I'm sick or sadistic. It's because I'm comfortable doing something that I know is fine. And, and if I use that poop in, in food, well, then I get a benefit. And these are just like little tiny pieces, little pieces. But you have to change your whole yeah. life, starting with the first thought. And that's the attitude of gratitude. And from there, all the things that you and I have discovered in our abundant lives become much clearer to those that have no idea what we're talking about. We are in a, we're, we're, we're more an advanced level and we've been delving into this for more years than many people who want what we know. They want what we have, that abundant lifestyle. People are like, Diamond, where do you get your energy? And then other people are like, he smokes meth, man. No, trust me, I smoked meth when I was in the scene. You know what I mean? I chased the dragon. I did all that shit decades ago at the party scene and all that. I don't, I don't seek that out. That is not my abundance. That was killing me. It was killing me from the inside out. It literally left a hole yeah. inside of my body, a void of nothingness. And today I am filled with nothing but potential to become even better and greater. And the most important thing I know now at 48 coming up in August is that I don't know a fucking thing that nothing. And it's great, isn't it? To know that like we are, we are, we are at the beginning in a way, like, <laughs> This culture we grew up where they're like, we know everything. It's like, no, you don't know anything. Ah, and and like you said, he's like they're doing all this stuff. They're melding things. They're trying to create a new culture, and that's what permaculture is really about. It's about marrying new cultures that we create in our local bioregions with our people, with our internal intrinsic beliefs that that we have with earth care, people care, and future care. And like you said, they're all into sustainability. They're doing this. You go over there, there's a completely different group. In some places, they have like nuns who are just like in the middle of nowhere. And they're like, you know, we started getting into raising goats. And then suddenly we started working with cannabis. And it's like, whoa, we have people everywhere taking things from the, from the edges and putting them together and creating new culture. Because we're culturally starving in our societies right now. And that's what people are looking for meaning. They're looking for that abundance because they're starving for it. They're starving for meaning and purpose. And for me, I, when, when, when I start my day and I feel blank, I actually, I, so I have like the gratitudes at the end of the day. And then I have the things that I'm like visualizing that, I, uh, that I'm going to be grateful for in the future but I'm, I'm visualizing them now as if they're happening to me right now, first thing in the morning. And that creates a totally different flavor of gratitude. And so it, it's like this twin engine of gratitude for me. It's like future that I'm already grateful for. So while I'm hungry for it, I can not get pissed off or, or upset at it not taking, you know, going fast enough or something like that. And then at the end of the day, I reflect on all the amazing things that have happened And what happens is the glial cells in our brains are taking snapshots of our personality every night before we go to bed. And when you go to bed, they set that memory and then you wake up in the morning with that same setting. So you go to bed grateful, you wake up grateful. You do this on a habitual basis, you become habitually grateful. You do this for long enough, it just becomes part of your personal reality, your personality as... Dr. Joe Dispenza likes to say, right? So yeah, this is what I've been doing. And it's really like reprogramming yourself in a rudimentary way. You're just writing things down and feeling feelings. But after a few weeks, it's like there's light switches that you never had in order to light up a house that you thought was much smaller. And you're like, I've got huge engines inside of me. I got huge capacity. And I had no idea that this was in me. 
And it starts with opening those doors with gratitude and just simple. I mean, it's not hard. It's hard to be consistent. Yes, indeed. I can't agree with you more. And I just want to say that I want to show everyone this. Take a look at what I have in my hand here. Can you identify this piece of fruit, Matt? Yes, it's indeed a pineapple. That is a piece of pineapple right there. Oh, wow. It's a dried pineapple, obviously, because I'm holding Heck it. Heck yeah. But more importantly, okay. this pineapple <laughs> now contains THC. And this is a breakthrough called Forbidden Fruit, and it's one of the things I'm grateful for. They, uh, we used to have to eat this edible THC in a gummy, which is a piece of candy, but a company just discovered how to put THC in fruit. You can get kiwis, you can get apples, you can get oh. mangoes, you can get pineapples. And it's fruit that you eat. Like, it's Amazing. food. I'm eating food with THC in it right now. Yeah. That is a gratitude list. And is it activated THC? Absolutely. 10 milligrams. I don't even know how they figure yeah, out so, how to put so, that in there. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> measure it, right? It's another crazy thing, how it's, fast things are another changing. Another thing that's I mean, available to everyone is full plant, full spectrum CBD oils. This is the full hemp plant. It's very nutritional. It's all the terpenes, all the micronutrients, and the CBD. And you can get massive doses of this. It's legal worldwide and in every state. It could literally change your life and wean you off of all the pharmaceutical poison that is making you sick. I'm grateful for this and the ability to share this with people without going to jail. Because I don't know if you know or others, yeah. I'm a felon because I used to grow cannabis. And I almost didn't think I was going to get out of the criminal justice what? system because of it. But here I am today living in a legal That's state. A, I'm so sorry. Growing cannabis living an abundant life that I was told by the system would never occur. So I believe the power uh, of intention. You know. Yeah. I believe the power of intention, Matt is everything. And I want to leave tonight on your thoughts on the power of intention, because I literally believe there's two types of manifest destiny. There's the racist, misogynistic, horrendous one, and there's the one in which you manifest your destiny through intention. I've always told people that I'm sitting in this chair today and I have a permaculture orchard out here. And my partner, Leah, who loves me, is, loves the, the chickens and the orchard and, and the house and the bees. Look at all this bee equipment. Those are bee frames and hives. We're doing this together because we're living an abundant life because we had the power of intention to come here and do it and to check out a Dodge, opt out of our old lives and start anew. It's, it has freed us beyond words. What say you about the power of intention? And by the way, Matt, have mm. I told, has anyone told you today? I love you. Ha, <laughs> thank you. So, uh, I, I, I mean, this is my life. I have spent the past year meditating on being on a giant permaculture site that I would be creating and, and, and working on. And then it was really interesting because I was visualizing that I was in front of a lake. And what happened was actually a crisis with this, with this, um, this house that we were in. And my wife was getting getting sick. There was all these mice, and my wife doesn't really have a, a strong immune system um, because she's had radiation and cancer so many times. So I had to get her out of the house. And so um, some some good friends of mine helped us, and and we were up in an Airbnb, and it just randomly happened to be on a lake. So this, this entire year, I've been like meditating. And when I'm going into like, like the void and everything, like half the time there's a lake in front of me and I have to like dismiss it. Right. But it's always there. And so it's like this like beautiful thing. And I arrive at this Airbnb in the middle of this crisis and the lake's there. And I'm like, this is the lake. And so 
I'm like falling into this. I'm like trusting this. We're, we, meanwhile, we go through seven different houses that backfired. One of them, they we were moving in in three days and they backed out because of a family emergency. And so all these awful things that my identity got stolen, I think on the fourth house. So it was just awful. It was so awful. And we couldn't, we realized we weren't going to be able to find a house in time. The people were, were, were upset with us and they said they were going to kick us out. They said they found someone else to come in um, uh, because we had said we were out publicly, right? And so I was like caught in the middle, but like I kept up my routine. I kept visualizing the impossible, the absolutely ludicrous. And then in the middle of it, like the seventh time, I got a call and it was like, you need to talk to Tomas. And I was like, who is this? And they just were like, I've got a place for you. I've got a spot for you. And I arrive at the spot. I'm meanwhile, like totally like post-traumatic stress syndrome here. I'm like freaking out, you know, I'm in shock, right? They put us in this, in this wonderful home and I'm like, oh my word, the, it, it, it somehow fits into our budget. Um, but it's like, it's everything that we needed, but way greater. And then a week into it, he takes me on a little drive on the property and he's like, yeah, it'd be really cool if you could help us with this site. And I'm like, huh. And then he drives me for two miles around the entire mountaintop. And then a week later leaves and says, Hey, I love you. I'm I'm going to uh, set up this other thing here. You've got this. We're, we're, we you can run with it. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. This is exactly what I've been setting my intention on: having a large site, having the ability to have a home for my family that's safe and that one that I can afford. All these things, and it wasn't like. Oh, I, I earned a ton of money and all those things happened or something like that, or I won the lottery. It's like these things are following like the elbow passages, the backwoods, the, the secret passages. It's all the craziest thing. This wouldn't have happened unless I did a, a, po a podcast or a, a video interview like this three weeks prior to that. And all these strange combinations of things came together in this link, 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 link. And now... I'm in the greatest opportunity of a site I've ever, ever been in. I'm in the nicest home that I've ever had to put my family in. We're 20 minutes away from my wife's, my, my wife's sister's family who grew up at the house next to us. So our boys all were brothers and they were like basically like brothers. The situation is like ludicrously, unbelievably amazing. And that's why I did, I'm doing the video series 80 Acres into Permaculture and people are following along every step on my channel, The Permaculture Student. But it was setting that intention. It was doing the work. I meditate for an hour. And literally, I, I, I get into that point where I'm in that lower brainwave state, you know, 20, 30 minutes in, I just breathing with your eyes closed. And what happens is you, you, at that point, you set your intention in that deep space of your mind in that calm, open, relaxed state, some people call it hypnosis, um, and it's just the, the, it's a, it's that moment before, like when you're waking up early in the morning, or that moment where you're almost going to bed at night. You just go right back to that spot and just start putting intentions in there, and it came together in a way that defied logic, defied reason, and defied my circumstances. So I 100. And thousand percent, <laughs> just to make an impossible number up for a second, believe that intention and, and faith is another word for intention. If you prefer that from your background or wherever you're from, who's listening to this, but it's this belief that something good is coming for you, that you, can, you, that you're enough, that you're worthy. It's that, that, that confidence and, and it comes, it comes. And even if you start off just by saying the words, our bodies don't know the difference actually. So, and the flip side is also be careful with the dangerous things and negative things you say, because our body again, doesn't understand sarcasm and just hears you and obeys. So that's why people who say negative things about themselves have negative consequences happen. And that, that sounds woo woo, 
but it's totally 130,000% been proven. If you want to check out You Are the Placebo by Dr. Joe Dispenza, groundbreaking information. The placebo effect is our superpower as humans. And it's our faith. It's our intention. And when we yes. set those things in motion, we create it as a habit. We turn that gratitude into a muscle. We change everything within and without. <laughs> yeah. So um, I've, yeah. Been, I've been working with heart math. Uh, and that this is an entry level step for those that want to become a guru, those that want to become the next Jesus. You want to learn how to heal yourself. You want to know about intention and you want to know how to get in there. I love heart math. Yeah. All you have to do is heart math and you don't have to buy the equipment or go to an expensive therapist. I'm going to teach you how to do it. And you just breathe in for five seconds and back out for five seconds and you create a slow perpetual rhythm. And what this does is it brings your brain waves into stasis, homeostasis, and it brings your heart and your entire EKG into flatline, and it brings you into what is called coherence. And, and this coherence, which almost nobody in the, the modern world can achieve, can be achieved if you just listen to Matt and I and just do what we say, breathe, up for five, down for five. If you can do this consistently for five minutes, you will achieve coherence. And what happens in coherence is you have the ability to heal yourself, heal others, and you also have the ability to clearly pray to the universe, in which case your message will be heard. And Matt was saying, just be general and pray. Say, I want good things. Don't do that. Be specific. Say you want to be in Pagosa Springs and have a 500-acre permaculture farm next Thursday because that will bring you closer to yes. your exact yes. intention. All right, we're going to wrap it up. I'd love tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and tonight, we Matt and I haven't even discussed any of this. We didn't. We had no prior discussion. We just came <laughs> on and we rolled with it and we knocked it out of the park because we're coming from the same place. We have experienced the same miracles and we want you to experience them too. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. What are we going to talk about next time? It seems like we hit, we really hit a home run. Yeah. Let's, um, I'll think about that. I mean, let's see what the comments are. I well, always like going off of like uh, what the threads are. Yeah, guys, why don't you tell Matt and I what to talk about next Friday? Uh, comment below. If you, if you want to find Matt Powers, you can find him all over the web. Just type in Matt Powers. He's at thepermaculturestudent.com. He's got a YouTube page, Matt Powers, the Permaculture Student. He is everywhere, like swimwear. He's on the Oppenheimer Ranch Project regularly in Magnetic <laughs> Reversal News, for Christ's sake. And he's got tons of books on Amazon, which I'm going to put in my store uh, so that you can grab Matt's books and I can get a dollar while he gets the rest. Woo! We love you, Matt. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. That was awesome. That was.